guys, this is Fee, Diamond in the Rough, and um, another whip and chat. Uh, another Egypt trip, take you down memory lane. Um, so what I've done so far is I've taken you up to, I suppose, the, when I landed day one, or my arrival day, and then um, showed you uh, some of where I stayed. Um, in Mina House. So we'll continue on from there with, well, officially day one. What's actually classed as officially day one? Because the first day there's normally nothing. It's just the travel there. There's normally not any events happening. And I do have you on the microphone. Nathan is at home. And um, we'll just see how that goes. <laughs> He's promised he'll try and keep quiet. <laughs> Hence, I've put the microphone on because uh, that'll be the day. Okay, so Anubis so far, um, just trying to see. I think I'm going to have to move this for you guys to see. I've got it pinned down. Hang on. Okay. So I've got a fair amount done so far. I think my last whip and chat was actually this section here. I've done about 25 centimetres so far, 70 centimetres to go. Woohoo! It's looking good though. Even though the light pad is on underneath there, it's not very bright. Um, there's not much in the way of gapping. Just not in right. There we go. There's not much in the way of gapping. Hang on, I'll brief the light up. Even there, it's pretty good. Nothing, no issue with popping drills. And I am only using the light lightly. Ha ha ha. Um, I'm not using a lot of light in reality. Okay, so I'm just going to try and position this. <sighs> Sorry guys, it's just going to get tilted a little bit just while I try and get this camera right and then get this right. <laughs> it's easier to move this than it is the camera. How stupid is that? Okay, so I'm just going to get on to... I should use the bead board, but i just not in the mood for the bead board. But on to... The way I tend to work is for the top left symbol. Sometimes I go by you know what I can see the most colours off, or, or I go by the top left sim, the upper left symbol because I'm working my way that way. But so start off with the story with Egypt. So you guys have heard the decision to go, um, how I got there. Um, and my first night or my first day and you know but um, yeah it ended up being quite a quite an interesting trip so I still remember that Jenga curry I had from the when I stayed there <laughs> uh, that's been two years um, what's today's date is the 11th Okay, so it's about two years ago, nearly two years ago, because it was the 18th, the 17th, so that I was in Egypt, 2017. Um, back to tweezers. So those are, I do use, do I prefer tweezers for the squares. Um, okay. So I've done day one. I'm sorry, I'm half listening with my left ear for Nathan coming in. Um, but that's all good. I'm trying to see. It's not that focused. Hmm. Hang on a sec. I don't know if that's any better or not. But, okay, so, day 
day, official day one. Um, was interesting day. Um, one of the things that was really funny was if I show you. So what I will do is while I'm talking to you, I will be looking at my pictures as I go through. So what you'll see here is some pictures of what it was like looking outside my room on day one. It was foggy and cloudy. Um, it was not misty at all, but it was there was a dampness in the air which um, was quite surprising, you know, coming from going, you know, I'm going to a place where there's a desert. <laughs> and then you come across this and it was like, it was just a surreal feeling of just, it just didn't seem, whoops, didn't seem right. So, yeah. Um, I don't know what time I got up. I, did, I think I asked for a wake-up call. I can't remember on that one. But um, I'll show you some pictures. Because the that day one was so foggy. It was very foggy. Um, and so you'll, you'll get some pictures there of what it was like. Foggy. And I will actually give you a picture of what it was like. Um... The night before so you can compare the difference in in what it was like either the night before or some other photo that I've taken where um, Mina house the main entry and with the pyramids in the background you'll be able to see them in the comparison so yeah very 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 foggy that basically it looked like somebody had taken the pyramids they were there the night before <laughs> Then they were gone. Um, gone in for breakfast, had my breakfast and was very... So Australia, we have black crows. I was very interested in these crows. I sent you, there's a picture there of these crows. Um... Oh, there's a trash drill. Whoops. Um, yeah, there's a picture of these crows that they just get everywhere. But I was just fascinated by the colour of them because they weren't black like Australian crows are, all black. But they were quite content to be around the place, as you can see by that picture. Um, so, okay, the day got underway with, um, I went into, um, reception and waited for my guide, um, and me being me, I'm always early, so I was there for ages waiting, <laughs> just because I hate being late anyway, um, so yeah, I was waiting. I would, um, what happened, I, where, where did it, the main reception, there was, you see, I see groups come in and go and all the two, two groups come and go. And then uh, I had, uh, I got introduced to um, my guide, my Egyptologist actually, not just a guide, Egyptologist, that's, they actually do study to become Egyptologists. More trash. Um, and he introduced himself. And I had to ask him to say his name again. And then I asked him to spell his name. Because the way he said it, I felt uncomfortable saying his name. Um, now, the reason is, is because his name is spelt M-A-G-E-D, okay, which 
when it is pronounced, it's maggot. <laughs> okay, which, um, how do I put it the nice way? The way it sounded was if he was saying maggot, M-A-G-G-O-T, which is why I had to ask him to say his name a couple of times. But it was maggot, M-A-G-E-D. Um, yeah, that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy, I don't know if he realised why I was asking him to spell his name or not. Um, but yeah, he picked us, he was there, introduced himself, told me a bit about it, a bit to expect to the day. Now, the initial plan for the day is you go to the places that are generally the hottest in the mor the hottest places you go to in the morning so that you're not visiting them in the afternoon heat. So we were supposed to go to the P the pyramids, um, the pyramids of Giza, but because of the fog, um, he turned around and said we're not going to do the pyramids till this afternoon, and because I won't benefit from seeing them because it's the fog is too much to it blocks out too much. I can't really appreciate it. So the plan was to reverse the tour around a bit. Okay, so we got, well, he took me outside and there we go. What was parked right outside the front was the tour bus that I was on, the little shuttle bus that I was on with the same driver and in his hand he had my tripod. So I had left my tripod behind but he had it there and he made sure that I got it. Um... That driver, he was brilliant. He got extra tips from me. I think I tipped him way too much, possibly. I don't know. Don't know the ratio, but he was appreciative of the tip that I gave him at the end of the t end of the travels. Hi. Right. So uh, you might notice some pauses. That's because I'm pausing the recording. I still keep drilling. But I just pausing while Nathan comes in and out, so bear with me on that. But yeah, so my driver, um, he had my tripod, so it was like, yay, really happy with that. So I hadn't lost my tripod, um, which is like I, I thought I'd, I wouldn't see it again because you, you, I didn't know it was actually just that one bus that they used um, for me. Um, so yeah. From there, we piled in and we went to Memphis. And Maggot was amazing. Okay, so he was so full of information that it just, I was mind blown to the degree where all this information that he was giving to me, I did not absorb. And I wish I had, but he was saying stuff and I, I was appreciating it at the time, but it still, it just didn't sink in. Um, yeah, it was just absolutely gobsmacked. But we went to Memphis. Um, and we saw... Uh, where do we see it? Just hang on. Okay. Um, was it Me we went to Mes Memphis and then um, there was a memorial for um, some of the gods, oh my gosh, this is shocking. I can't remember names of gods or anything. Um, but in there we saw some, so this is, I'll show you, there's a statue that's lying on his back. And the... Was that Ramses? 
hang on so it was the Ramses the Ramses the second Ramses Ramses the second uh, he was the Pharaoh that um, was he he probably did the most for the Egyptians for everything that I can tell he was one of the one of the best of the pharaohs <laughs> um, but when you see this statue so it was found face down no it wasn't it was on its yeah it was face down you can only see its back but I'll send you show you some pictures from up high and then at height level um, sorry at head level whereas I took a picture of him and you'll see that the size the absolute size of the, what they did was amazing right. so then we went went and walked around the grounds for where this uh, statue was and there was a few other statues that had been collected around the place um, there was the Hathor head. I think I've got pictures. Hang on. Okay. Let's go back to this and bear with me, guys. Hang on. Okay, that's better. So, yeah, then there was, went around and there was the Hathor head or the Greek goddess Hathor. Um, which was a cat well not a cow but it was based off a cow um, hmm. maybe I should do more research before I continue on but this is more about the trip and, and that so yeah we went around to quite a few statues um, and came across the Sphinx of Memphis uh, have I got a picture of that yeah I do have a picture of that so we all see everybody's seen the Sphinx in in Giza but lo and behold there is Sphinxes everywhere or well, not everywhere but all over Egypt there's different Sphinxes around the place is that all the A's looks like it um yep so my first apart from what I'd seen on the light show my first real up close view of a sphinx was actually in Memphis not in Cairo so I'll show you I think I'll put some pictures of some of the statues around the place and then Um, we went to, oh, what was it called? Okay, so first, we, first pyramid I went to was the Saqqara, in Saqqara where I saw the first pyramid ever built um, it was the step pyramid of Joser D-J-O-S-E-R there we go I've actually got the information up there and so that was the first pyramid ever built it's quite interesting to see um, and they are trying to they are doing restoration work on it it's nothing to the degree of the pyramids of Giza but you know this is where they where the pyramids first started there was also a section where you walk through which is um, columns and this is supposed to be where columns were created however they weren't um, round columns they would if you 
have a look at the so the picture that I show you yeah you look down and you see co what looks like columns and then when you actually get in amongst them it's actually the front of a column with built with the works behind it so this is done before columns were actually created I suppose before they discovered that columns were sufficient to hold things up without having to add any additional support it's really funny to see that um, yeah we, we know that so long as you put the right things in the right place um, columns will hold up and hold things up and hold roofs up I don't know whether I explained that clear enough but yeah went from that's another trash drill um, from there so I walked around there a bit and it was really funny because we're walking around and I've turned around and <laughs> and just had this thought you know like uh, Maggot was talking about all these different pyramids and all I could think is oh you know basically any hill around here is going to be a pyramid and then he points out this this these couple of hills and he's going that's this pyramid that's that pyramid he gave them names and it's like oh my god they are they are pyramids they're not just hills um <laughs> yeah I felt a little bit silly um but we I got the opportunity to go into and what was it called um walked around a bit and it was quite I'll put some pictures in here although I won't fuss over them there's one there where um, you can just see how far down the steps go it's just quite the the depth that some of these things go to is just amazing but we went to the Maruka tomb and I will show you a couple of pictures in there you do have me standing in there um, but before you go into any of these um, places you know Maggie turned around and he said you can't take photos in 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 any of these and then he goes but if you have some cash someone will help you <laughs> Basically, you if you wanted, so you pay to enter this air, these areas. But if you want to take pictures, you basically have to pay one of the guides to, I suppose, turn a blind eye. Um, however, they don't turn a blind eye. They actually will take the camera from you and take pictures of you in, <laughs> take pictures with you in them. <laughs> um, but yeah there's a couple there that are quite cool and you can see pictures of me in there um, from oh god I still remember this from there we went to a, a rug making or well Egyptian rug making so the floor mats and that um, and you go in and part of the and hopefully I'm getting this right part of the Egyptian um, culture is when you go into somewhere they you they offer you tea um, and this was offered to me you know, it was hibiscus tea it was very sweet very sweet tea but it was nice um, and you're taken through Maggie left me with one of the guides there and he took me around and showed me all the mats that they have and talked about how they're made so you know watching the silk and it was actually what they call what they call a university so it's where they learn how to um, make mats make make Egyptian mats and carpets and that and they call it a university so um, 
it's quite interesting to see they call what that they call it a university where to me a university is uh, more books and learning that way not learning a craft in Australia learning a craft you do something like that at a TAFE uh, which is a technical what are they what I don't know what TAFE stands for maybe I should look that up um, but basically it's where you learn technical skills so you learn the craft of doing stuff so you as a as a as how you do your apprenticeship so what they called a university was what we would probably call in a, doing an apprenticeship um, but part of their funding that they get is basically obviously from what they sell so you go in there and there is all these beautiful beautiful Egyptian carpets from silk to the standards I was just amazing and yet taken around and shown how they're done you introduced to some of the some of the students um, as they're working um, and I do know that before I went on holidays like Nathan and I we built the house and we were looking at floor mats um, at back at home and I turned around and said, well, I'll see if I can find something in Egypt. If I find a nice mat in Egypt, I'll, I'll get it and have it sent over. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, that's, that didn't happen. I saw the price. The price of these floor mats were just phenomenal. The mats were absolutely gorgeous, but I couldn't justify the price. I couldn't afford the price, probably. I could probably justify the work but I couldn't afford to pay what they were asking. Um, but, oh my gosh, they were beautiful. They were stunning. I do know I was walking around for a while, and I'm, while I'm walking around, I am looking for a bench or something because like my tea, I drank my tea, and I was just wandering around with this cup in my hand, and I just I wanted to put it down, but I couldn't find anywhere. Um, so I've actually got that. My, my best solution was to ask for a bathroom so that then I can give that person my cup so that I could go to the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, I had, that's it. that was the only way to get rid of my cup because there was nowhere for me to put it down. Um, and I felt, when I left there, I felt guilty that I hadn't brought something. I hate going in and being demonstrated something and then not being able to purchase. Not even there wasn't even something small that I could afford to buy, which you know well when I travel I like to support the uh communities I I visit. Um but yeah the price of it was way too high for me to to purchase anything um, that I wanted to take home. Um nothing that I could purchase uh, to give it as a gift either you know like it was just what I well there wasn't really anything I could afford it was all basically out of my price range but yeah so from there we went to lunch and yeah this is where I learnt that uh, there's some foods that I just don't like. There's another one. Um, I will. Food that's in a it been in a bay marie, um, where so many people uh, gather over it. <laughs> um, or yeah, it just without being rude, the hygiene of the fact that you see so many tour buses were going through and like as we were going in there was people going out and everybody was at different stages of eating their meals. Um, none of the food was covered at, at all. It was all open and with me, um, I just, I struggled to find anything there that I found 
nice to eat. Nothing was... Um, yeah, there was just nothing that appealed to me. Uh, and that's... If I can't recognise some foods, I just won't eat it. So I went for a little bit of salad. Note to everybody, salad. What do you, what do you avoid when you go on into countries that you that you shouldn't drink the water? You shouldn't eat the salads. But that's another story. Um, so yeah, I was on the salad, and I think I ended up with a no. I got a coke. This restaurant actually had coke, so I got a coke. So, you know, I've got to have a, a Coke with this salad. Hang on, I've got knobbly bits on these. Oh, I'm going to be filtering through for that. Um, yeah, so meal was less than desirable and Magga turned around and said, you know, why aren't you eating much? And I, I turned around and said, I just don't like the food. I just, nothing there I liked. Um, he said, oh, what would you like? And I turned around and said, oh, you know, just a piece of chicken, you know, no, with no extra herbs or flavourings on it, something like that. Just some of the spices just, I can't seem to, my, my nose won't let me go near them. I don't know what it was. I was just being fussy, I suppose. Um, yeah. So the the thing about the bathroom which I had with um Mr. Ramadan. So every stop we made, even Maggot was I've just gonna use this bathroom, I've got to go to the bathroom. It's really funny to hear guys going, you know, not I've done tours before and you when they go to the bathroom they don't tend to tell you. Um but I suppose it's more a case of, well, we're not leaving you here alone just so you know well, this is where I'm going. But it was just so uh, funny. But eventually you find out why. It's basically that they know which bathrooms are clean and which bathrooms are not clean. So if they say they're going to the bathroom, it's the perfect opportunity for you to go because probably the next place you go to won't be a clean, have a clean bathroom or the bathroom will be less than desirable. Um, but yeah, that's what it's like with the bathrooms there, toilets, yeah. Um, so yeah, we had that and then I had my bearings about me. It was really funny, I had my bearings about me and I'm like, the direction that we were travelling from when we left the... Um, from when we left... The, the rug shop, the, the mat place. Where did that just go? I just flung a drill. No, can't see it. Um, yeah, <laughs> we went to the... the, the from, from looking at that, the direction we were driving, I could tell that we were heading in the direction towards uh, Mina House, where I was staying. But we stopped, we did stop in direction of that. We did make one stop before we got close to there. And was it that one or not? No. No, that was, no, there wasn't anything. We didn't stop then. It was the next next day that, gee, they are blending together. Um, yeah, so from there we went towards the hotel. I knew we were on that direction. And then we went past it and we were heading to the pyramids. Now, the pyramids, I could have walked to them from Mina House. So when we got to the pyramid, when we were going there, you know, realised how close the pyramids were to where I was staying. Um, we were, I was staying in the hotel that was the closest, closest hotel to the pyramids, which is really cool, really cool. So we've gone up and Maggot's given me all the details 
all the details on the pyramids um, which is really cool really cool um, but I think so when you go there they'll, I'll pop in a picture here where you can actually see me in front of the pyramids um, and in the at the opening where is it hang on let's see if we can find it over my right shoulder you see two hollows um, the one down the you've got one on the top and the one down the bottom it looks like there's people so that's actually the entrance to where you can go in and you go there and you get the opportunity well obviously part of the tour that I paid for was to get to into I see the pyramids but you actually pay I paid extra to get to go inside the pyramid but by going inside the pyramid was absolutely amazing and stuffy and it was interesting but Maggot turned around and said they don't allow cameras inside so you'll need to leave your phone or your camera behind you can't take it in with you he said you have two options one option is to give it to me to hold or um, the guard that's at the door will hold it for you and you will get it when you come out so I thought my best option was to <laughs> give him my my bag and I actually gave him all of my bags um boy am I glad I did <laughs> Uh, yeah he got all my bags he got my passport he got the whole yeah yeah he got the whole lot um, and he did he come up a bit of the way with me and took a picture and you see the lovely guard behind me with his hands on his hips so <laughs> they look greatly impressed over there but basically if I hadn't given Maggot my camera um, I did take my bag with me I think I don't know gosh I can't remember no I think I did leave it with it he, I, he took the picture and then I gave him my bag and that um, but yeah I gave it to the gave it to him and I went inside now it's very narrow in there if you are claustrophobic, I would not go. I would not recommend going in there. Um, I have some interesting anxieties, and uh, I got about two thirds of the way up. You don't know how far in you are until you get to the top. But basically, I got about two thirds of the way up, and got there and went I can't do this I can't go up any further <laughs> and I just about psyched myself into turning around and heading back down because it was like I didn't know how much further it was it was very closed cramped um, and then I went to turn around and then my other part of my brain kicked in going you will not be back here you will never get this opportunity again if you go down now are you going to regret not going all the way up to the top just to see what's there and I had a mental argument with myself <laughs> um, basically I think one of the thoughts was, you know, if, if we have an earthquake, you know, well, I'm stuck in here. The stupid things that go through your minds when you have a panic attack. I managed to keep it together. I was in there by myself, so it wasn't like I had somebody there to turn to or anything like that. I was in there by myself with a couple of hundred people going up, up the top, basically. I let people pass me. Um, but, yeah, I just had this horrible thought and convinced myself you know something if something happened it was this and it'd be that and 
in the end my, my the good part of my brain won out with going you're never going to come back here again you'll never get this opportunity again just get your ass up there and check it out <sighs> so I did I went all the way up the top all the way up well not the top all the way up into the inside as far as you could go and it was a big let down I'm glad I went up there but it was a big let down it's a big chamber there was a, a a sarcophagus thing in the in there but otherwise it was just a big square room so basically you get up you walk around the room and then you go down hmm but I will say, if I hadn't have gone up, I wouldn't have known what it, what was there. If that makes any sense. Um, yeah. Um, then while I was in there, I was I just had this thought of this air. How many millions of people have breathed this air? <laughs> And there was just these horrible, horrible thoughts of, of the bacteria in it. You know, I'm not a germphobe. I am not a germphobe. But all I could think is all this bacteria that's in this area and then took me back to some of the sci-fi movies that I'd seen where um, basically, you know, you've gone in and there's air that that's, yeah, really weird stuff was going through my head in that place confined space and all just didn't wasn't do, dealing too well with it but I got there I got out I survived um, mm. so I come back down and I came back down and come out and I took a big breath of this lovely fresh air that was Egypt and Egyptian air was so much cleaner than the air that was inside that inside that pyramid <laughs> but mm, I was happy to be outside when I got out there and it was it was it was sticky it was warm it wasn't overly hot it was warm and uncomfortable um, yeah, the the fog of the morning had cleared up, so we could see things, um, but it hadn't gone to full heat like it probably could have. Um, but yeah, um, so from there we walked around the side, and Maggot was telling me about how they'd found these boats. One of the discoveries, the one of the discoveries that had been done was these wooden boats had been found and they were f intact, everything except for the ropes. Um, and I was absolutely fascinated by it because what it had done is somebody had actually built one of these boats, had reconstructed one of these boats um, using the same method as the Egyptians. He did... Um, in the same method so that means that there was no nails this boat was built with ropes so he's gone in and done full research and recreated rebuilt this boat to um, original spec basically <laughs> is that the best way to put it I'm just going to pause there for a second Okay, another pause. Nathan uh, obviously came in. He's now in the shower, cleaning up. He's been working the, on his car in the garage. Um, so yeah, this guy had reconstructed these boats using the Egyptian method of when they built the sun boats or the solar boats back in the day. Um, so we've gone in and toured that one and yet again that was a case of having to give over cameras but because Meg takes you in and 
took me in and showed me around what you need to do in this this building inside to go in is you need to um, take your shoes off you can't walk around on the floors with your own shoes you have to have your feet covered with this with these slippy type things to protect the floor so everything is very well controlled in there um, but yeah it was absolutely amazing to see they built it so that you can the walkways go all the way around it and yet again no photos I wasn't able to it wasn't even a case of giving cashola to get photos um, so yeah from there we left there and we went for a bit of a walk um, got picked up by the map my magical bus driver um, and went t got taken to a viewing platform and now I know everybody likes taking selfies everybody loves taking selfies and I can tell you what when you take selfies um, it's a good thing for you to be recognized that you are in the area but they have a point when you go and see stuff where this is you're not supposed to go past this point but so that people can get themselves into images they go beyond that point which then makes other people end up with them in the picture so it just the selfie word world has just gone nuts when it comes to tourist locations because the consideration of the fact that you want the picture with just you in it don't go so you know it, it, by doing what they're doing in that way it means that nobody else can get a picture because they're in their pictures as well um, I don't know how many times I got frustrated by people that were taking selfies I couldn't take pictures in some places because there was too many selfies being done oh, hang on a sec okay so Nathan came back in and now he's gone to the couch so if you hear any noises you shouldn't though because I've got the mic on um, but yeah sorry I'm just listening to see if he's coming out there. no all right so yeah selfies hate people taking selfies it's actually very selfish is the best way to put it when you're in a tourist area people go step beyond the boundaries and then nobody else can get a decent picture without anybody in it so it's very frustrating but um, Maggot's taken yet again he's taken me he, yet again he took another picture of me in front of the pyramids you know like I hate being in front of the camera um, one of the reasons why I prefer to take I prefer to take photos than be in them um, but yeah so I pop out a picture of the pyramids so you go up to this big area watching area where there's a and you get a view of the pyramids hang on um, you get to see a big view of the um, pyramids and you can just faintly see Cairo in the background hmm so yeah from there did we so if we finished from there and then we went back down past I just flung another one um, went down past Mina house where I was staying and went around and we actually went to the Sphinx um, which is where the picture on the drill with me my main picture for the drill with me 
is actually a picture where you've got the pyramid, the sphinx with the camel in the foreground. So yeah. So I went and saw the Sphinx up close and personal. Um, and yeah, it was just, it was huge. It was huge. <laughs> um, went in, had a look at that, wandered around. I walked away. Um, I don't know where Megan was. Um, I walked down a little bit and came across, saw the camel and then thought, what a brilliant picture it would take. So I got myself in a position where I could get the pyramids, the sphinx and also um, this camel in shot. And I thought that was pretty cool. Um, nobody was around the camel. There was nobody there. So it was just, I managed to stay away, far enough away that it didn't spit on me or anything like that. And it was sitting down. You know when a camel's going to move, <laughs> take a take a lot of effort for them to get up. But yeah, what else? What else? What else? Oh, the may you turn around and explain to me about where why the pyramids are where they are um, because the Egyptians believed in an afterlife and they believed that life was basically the sun so the sun the rising of the sun in the east and setting in the west um, so in the by by setting in life uh, the sun rising is life and the sun setting is in the west. So for um, their beliefs, for anything for the afterlife, to go join the afterlife was you were buried on the west bank of the Nile. So when you actually go around, you will see most of the life, most uh, things on the Nile or on the east bank um, but every, all the mo monuments in relation to the dead are on the west. Yeah, it's quite interesting. But it's all, you know, the sun coming up and going down. And the, 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 you go down with the sun and then you'll be reborn in the morning when the sun rises in the east. So, yeah. Um, so that was basically it for day one. I... Was it day one? No, I think I did something else. I did. I went to, after the, the seeing the Sphinx, so I brought, got my coffee cups there. Yeah. You might have seen me using either a blue or a black coffee cups with Egyptian motives on it. I might show that in another whip and chat. Um, so I got those at the markets there, but then on the way back to the Mina house, um, Megan turned around and said, yeah, I, yeah, he said, oh, do you like Egyptian cotton? And I've turned around and said, yes. Um, I've turned around and said, I'd love to get some Egyptian cotton towels. So he has actually taken me to a store that sell Egyptian cotton sheets, towels, all of it. Um, and so I went in there and had a look around. Um, there was so much that I wanted to buy. There was so much I wanted to buy. But I saw the cotton towels, the Egyptian towels, and went, I want because I already knew I wanted to get some to bring home Egyptian cotton towels from 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 Egypt. Yeah. So I saw them and I couldn't make up my mind what to get, and I ended up with bath sheets, so big towels, bath sheets, um, 
couple of white ones and then I got different colors to give away as gifts um, but I didn't really think much about the fact that the size of them and then I brought them I'd paid for them and then they put them in plastic bags for me and then I went these aren't gonna fit in my suitcase <laughs> uh, uh, I, no it wasn't on but I still brought them and I was like oh well I'm just gonna have to pack better I'm gonna have to pack better to get them home uh, so I turned around and said to Maggot, I said I can't travel with these all over he, he when I got the bus he saw how much I had and he said uh, you're not going to be able to travel those so what we can do is where you're staying they put them into storage and they will hold it for you because you're going to come back when they'll hold it for you when you come back all you need to do is collect it from them then um, so he organized for that so we went back to the Mina house and he organized for um, these things to go into storage so I didn't have to cart them all over Egypt with me which made it much much better idea um, but yeah you go into this storeroom there is so much stuff stored in there <laughs> that's my oh my goodness um, it's not like people it's not a rare thing to be done apparently it's done all the time um, whoops just jiggled that too much and there um, so yeah that was day one um, went back to my room ended up having when I went had dinner I, oh gosh dinner I couldn't make my mind up yet again on the food so I went back and had the Jenga curry again so a prawn curry and this time it was hotter than the first time <laughs> yeah, it was still nice really enjoyable um, so I've had dinner, gone back to my room and then updated my website. Um, so yeah, that's that was my first official day in Cairo. Um, just I will pop some pictures in as I go through. Um, yeah so there's just some gorgeous pictures in there I'll, I'll pop those through uh, I'll just do the one day because I think t the next day was um, the Cairo Museum and that ended up being one hell of a long day that one um, so yeah, that's that's another day of my trip to Egypt. Hopefully you enjoyed that day. Um, it's quite an interesting day. Very interesting day. Um, yeah. So guys, if you like that, please give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment. Um, yeah if you've eaten egyptian food what do you what's your opinions on it <laughs> um hit the subscribe button and obviously once you've subscribed hit the bell you get notified of when i upload and um you get to join me on another egypt adventure or a diamond painting adventure or any other adventure that i um, put up so guys, thanks for watching. And bye for now. <laughs>